Hi, everyone. I'm Pip from Seymour Digital Media. You're listening to Know How Marketing Lab podcast. This podcast brings together different experts in marketing from our Facebook group, Cyberpunk Geeks Marketing Mixer. Each week we get on here and we talk about something search marketing like Google ads or SEO, social media marketing from Facebook to TikTok or website marketing. If you're a marketer or aspiring marketer, a business owner or entrepreneur, this podcast for you. We're gonna share the best SEO, search, social uh, and website strategies. We share tips and hacks, Google ad strategies, what's going on in the current market. Each week we discuss something exciting and awesome in marketing. It is roundup time. We got our search specialists, our social specialists, our website specialists. And in a few weeks, we're gonna have many things happening on screen that are gonna be super cool. But for now, everybody has their name in the corner and why don't we all introduce ourselves? I'm Pip, bottom left. Who's left? I don't know. Rena. I don't. Well, we do we see the same? Yeah. <laughs> I'm I don't Rena, know. Regardless, Probably I don't know not. if I'm left or right. But I'm Rena. <laughs> uh, my name's Phelan. I work with Pip at Seymour Digital Media, and I am Greg with Original Seventy Two Creative. And together, all our marketing agencies combined, we talk search, social marketing, and help each other in this crazy marketing world. So we're gonna dive right in. There's lots going on if you don't know. And if you do know, you know one of the biggest things and I'm gonna jump right to something that is on our list, but GA4, because it's so important. I know you're all stressed about doing this, right? Greg is making an image. We have a special surprise coming up, but more on that later. And now we'll go to (laughs) Greg. Because it looks like we got a lot of website stuff going on. Why don't you start us off? We go to Greg first every time. Are you sure? It's because you're smiling all the time. We go to social often. (laughs) (laughs) They're all scared. You're all scared. You're like, who's first? (laughs) In the world of websites, there were two notables that I had brought. was one a domain related thing. Google has sold their Google domains to Squarespace. And so Squarespace will be taking over all of those domains that are currently registered in Google domains. I don't recall when that transition was going to happen, but I do know I had a couple of domains there and I immediately just went and go and, and transferred them to another registrar that I use. Is it easy? Oh, it's, well, yeah, transferring a domain is not difficult. There could be hiccups because you need, they need to be unlocked. They need to be, the registrant information typically also needs to be shown, not hidden anymore. And you need to get the domain off code before you request in the domain registrar that you want it transferred into before you actually put the request to pull that domain and in. So everyone knows auth code stands for authorization code. Oh, okay. And so it sounds like it could be easy and it could be hard. And if you have to troubleshoot, get a hold of a specialist. <laughs> you, and you don't, again, you don't need to. I was just bringing that up because I had wondered how many people who had domains that were at Google Domains do you when, know, I might recommend it. And actually like transferred them somewhere else. I would recommend it because we work with a company and I guess the, anyway, getting the, the company bought was bought by another company. And then there was a big domain issue year after year after year. Isn't there a big issue? Well, no, what had happened is that their, their DNS server that had the domain actually didn't officially recognize that they owned the domain, even though they took over the servers. And so when we went to renew it after the three years, they technically said that they didn't own it, but they knew that we did. It was, it was bad. It's it messy. Uh, so would that have stopped that if you changed the domain registrar? Well, I mean, yes, because you're, you're being, you're not just passively letting the system, like whatever gets transferred between Google and Squarespace. I think that's where the, I'd be concerned is that like when they transferred over that they missed something or one server that's hosting something doesn't get properly transferred over. That's where issues can show up and it's better to be proactive than passive about that. 
Yeah, that was one of the things I didn't know specific details on, and I don't think they were shown, but I'm, I don't know why I would say I would assume this, but I think that they will probably just take over the entire system that actually manages. So it's not like they're going to transfer all of these domains to another registrar that you know, Squarespace has because Squarespace doesn't have anything like this. So I feel like most, what most likely is going to happen is Squarespace will just take over the Google domains features and functionalities and continue to maintain those domains, have them, you know, renewed on whatever schedules they have, and then put their Squarespace branding on it and integrate it to their system. However, they're going to do that stuff. But the registrar registrar functionality will probably be all transferred over to Squarespace for managing the domain. So it's not like each one has to be transferred somewhere else. Okay. Well, okay. So don't worry, but worry. Try stuff, but don't. <laughs> Welcome to marketing. Be, be aware, I think, is the, the top one. It's just be aware of what's happening. If you do have domains with them, make sure that you're saying your domain doesn't go down, that you see it's officially in Squarespace, make sure that you're you're aware of what's going on with it, I think is the the big takeaway. And their pricing could change. They could they could decide that, you know, renewals of the specific top levels will, you know, change to something higher or what have you. How how many of us own domains out of just generally how how many extras do we own that don't have websites attached to them? I have about five or six. Yeah, how many you got, Rena? Yeah, like twenty or thirty. I've got, a, I've got quite a few. They're all pointing to websites, though, but they don't have oh. websites, and they should have their own websites. Yeah, because ah, that's yes. one day, one day, right? We all have big dreams. Yeah, so, uh, moving on to other web stuff, Rank Math, which is a super popular SEO plugin for WordPress, was bought by a company called Group One. Last week or two weeks ago, I can't remember when it was. The Group One also owns the notable WP Rocket, which is a big optimization, speed optimization plugin used for for WordPress. So it's not like they, you know, don't have something in the WordPress game. Ah, um, so that's they, interesting. Uh, but everybody's always wondering when things get bought, are pricing level is going to change is there still going to be a free version what changes are going to occur out of this because it is it it is a very widespread seo plugin very common Mm. yeah i think it's interesting because when you know in the last summer we were seeing a lot of companies get bought because the market was crazy and so maybe this is the beginning of companies buying companies and everything bouncing back maybe you know things in marketing can tell us what's going on in the rest of the world ish well this is you know that type of process has gone on for you know since technology company has existed really it's true i think uh, yeah but but this is also the end the the end of the era of private equity right because there's no free money anymore there's no zero percent interest rates so a lot of those deals were all based like the big rush that was happening before was private equity could borrow at zero percent interest rate buy all these companies and then just suck suck the value out of them but now that there is no zero percent interest rates and so i think a lot there's going to be a lot fewer of these deals that are coming out because they need to find money elsewhere and so i i just don't think it's i mean and it was by design right that was the whole intent so i don't think we have to worry Mm. about that as much anymore okay and phelan you were saying something about e-commerce websites and there was some vulnerability this month like what happened for well e-commerce yeah, WooCommerce, WooCommerce was Stripe, the, their add-on, there was a big vulnerability that was definitely make sure if you have WooCommerce, make sure you've updated your Stripe plugin because there was a big vulnerability, I think exposing, I think it was exposing user details, something like that. So mm-hmm. definitely get that mm-hmm. updated as as soon as possible. Greg, did you or Rena, did you guys notice anything with that? Did you have to update anything? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, It was passwords and usernames and in some cases, payment information. But I didn't hear, I understand that the people that were really affected were contacted separately. This was just a generic email that I got. 
I think Green Geeks also had an issue this this month. Oh wow! Okay, lots going on in the website space. Holy changes in technology that never happens, right? Changes, <laughs> changes in technology. I think that's the Privacy if you issue. right <laughs> if you want an exciting career that's ever changing, become a marketer. You'll always be learning. <laughs> I didn't know that when I started. Just so you know, but I think I'd maybe still pick it. Because I think it's fun. So we got, let's move on. Websites are fun, important. Don't forget to update your plugins as all these people here would tell you that. And mm -hmm. Rena, we're on to social. Yeah. So I think my favorite, I've got two favorite things that came up this month. One is this whole Reddit fight, which I find absolutely humorous. So if you're not following, basically Reddit moderators, they've been, they're being charged for their API usage. So people are using third-party functionality to monetize and organize their their streams and Reddit increased that pricing. And so everybody's all in a kerfuffle over it. And so they all got together, they organized and they all, many of them en masse shut their channels down to private. And that hurts Reddit because the good content is what attracts people to Reddit in the first place. And so mm. I guess the Reddit people sent them a we're going to shut your channels down if you don't go public so there they got a notification like that so it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out and um, it was an expensive on... change wasn't it like yeah, it wasn't yeah. just like a dollar a month yeah. no it was it was quite a quite a bit of money i don't know the numbers exactly but it was it was quite it was prohibitive as i think that was phelan's word the other day when we were talking about it yeah. so it, it made a big difference and how many own. of us use Reddit on a daily? I don't, I don't, I don't have any channels that I post to, but I definitely read Reddit. I think it's an interesting space to check in like a lot less often than my main spaces. Everything for like Reddit I, for me is personal use. No, no oh, business related stuff. I don't, I don't do any. It's yeah. I don't use space. it much. There's influencers. I think it's a really good space for influencers. And I think, Pip, didn't you say that, oh, I go there for Shade and Fraud, Glenna. Fraud and <laughs> Glenna. When is Shade and Fraud? What is uh, that? I don't know what that uh, is. It, it, Schadenfreude is a German word that means enjoyment in the suffering of others. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really funny that you know yeah, that, yeah, just so totally, you know. Totally. But there's also some really other interesting things on there for creativity. There's a lot of like people sharing their work. And I actually learn a lot about technical stuff, technology up there. I feel like there's a whole sort of subset of people that are on there sharing information. But you really do have to sift through the stuff. Like there's a lot of stuff on there. But I do enjoy it every now and again. Oh, I noticed that on Facebook, I got served up personal ads. I know that that's been available in the States for a while. Has anyone else? like? What do you mean personal right ads? Up? Well, I, I can. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's actually ads on my personal profile rather than having a, a, a business ad. You could have a personal. And it was right up at the top of my offered up at the top of my mobile feed the other day, which was weird. I thought that did was Did you really take weird. a snapshot? Did you take a snapshot? I did have a screen cap for that. Can yeah, I for sure. Put that in the comments because that'd be really yeah. interesting to see. Yeah. You could use Monosnap and mess with it and make a certain... Anyway, you could have fun with that. <laughs> then add it, but add it. I'd love yeah. to see what you're talking about. I think that's super yeah. helpful. That's and then TikToks. So TikTok's got a new feature. It's an AI feature. It helps you actually build your ad campaigns. It gives oh. you scripts that gives you calls to action and a variety of other suggestions for you to actually create your own ads instead of going to an agency. <laughs> oh, so that's interesting. There's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, are they going to be good eventually one day? But you do need strategy behind that. So maybe with all this yeah, AI stuff, yeah, Sometimes we're moving into strategy. Yeah, sometimes ads work on their own, but you can't really, I find that you really do need an overarching point to the whole thing. And I don't think AI, although you could probably, I wonder if you actually wrote in, in GPT, write me a social media marketing strategy, what would happen? Oh, it would write you a generic <laughs> strategy. Mm -hmm. It would be very yeah. generic. It would yeah, be like, true. use email marketing, post on social. Yeah, I wonder if Engage you could with users. actually get your brand first. 
I mean, the outline yeah. would be fine if you want to just use it for that yeah. and then like fill it in. Yeah, uh, top, actually, we're moving right? to the topic of what Pip and I are talking about in a couple of weeks. So we're going to save that because I got a whole other segue that I was going to use, but that's not that's for another time. <laughs> right. And we could say something about TikTok and reporting because so we've been desperate to get organic reporting because we do. All right two organic strategies for people to see if it'll help with the SEO. So we're doing a little mm -hmm. bit of video strategy using YouTube shorts and TikTok, and, but we can't measure the TikTok. So it's kind of like you're, you're in the blind. You're like, why am I doing this? Does this matter? Right. That, that reminds me, TikTok is getting rid of their shorts. What mm. do you mean? Sorry, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube. It's no, getting they're getting rid of, rid of, of their stories, not their shorts, I thought. Okay. Right? Okay. I know. I When I heard that, I was like, oh, my God, what? Okay, okay. Did but, I, I also mean, hear something about YouTube lowering the level for monetization? I was, I was just about to... I was just about to jump in there. That was something that I'd forgotten to mention when we did the prepping for the notes is that they've lowered the requirements for, yeah. because so few channels actually make it to the monetization requirements that they're actually making it a little bit easier to kind of get people, get their beaks wet and kind of get them invested in making content. So what does yeah. that tell us? That tells us it's time. Go over to the YouTube. No, no, the monetization. Did you say monetization for TikTok though? Or YouTube? YouTube. No, no, YouTube. 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 Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah, that must be true because I found that we were able to do a few new things on my client's account yesterday that I wasn't expecting to be able to do. I thought the threshold was much higher. All mm. right, good. That's exciting. I mean, to be honest, you know, a couple of years back, we heard that video was going to be 80% of marketing and we're seeing the rise, right? I mean, how many of us people now search on TikTok? I don't know. I mean, we always searched on YouTube, but YouTube was more for learning i thought i mean but now i mean they got good shorts shorts everywhere or well, we could name them all shorts and tiktoks and reels Real. and stories is that right yeah. is that all of them Tick yeah, that does, does, does twitter have one uh, i remember i hope not it, i don't do them oh interesting twitter, twitter has something called spaces but that's yeah, Spaces is closer to like it was a clubhouse. That's kind of, it, yeah, the direct it's kind of like a chat room where you can go in and live broadcast and people can join in. Yeah, so it's right. yeah. And there's, not, I mean, that's pretty interesting. The social space is always interesting. Uh, I haven't heard much about Facebook and Instagram, but people are still there. It's still used and needed. We'll update you on news if we get some pressing news that we learn. But for ads. It's pretty simple for Google ads this month. It's there's a new layout rolling out. Things are going to be in different places. So everybody that's done a course time to update, which is always fun. <laughs> kind of like a yearly thing that is right. <laughs> yeah. Like, sure. That's why um, most yeah. good marketing courses at the beginning will say, Hey, buttons might be in different places. So don't stress. Just know it'll be updated and just click around. There'll be updates. That's it. Want to know more about SEO? We've got a class for that. Our mission is to educate students about the right tools, techniques, and strategies to grow their businesses using the most up-to-date search engine marketing optimization techniques and tools. Find out more at knowhowmarketinglab.com. And then Google Organic and Local. Ooh, this is a good one. Failing, wait, you want to... Oh, what? Oh, I missed something. Wait, there was... Yeah, you did. So big change that's happening with because Google Ads is changing its attribution model. So they were going to get rid of everything except last click and data driven. But now they've pushed that back because of it, oh. the integration with Google Analytics 4 because the data, the all the attribution modeling seems to be going over to Google Analytics 4 where you're going to do your data there. And then that should be sending the conversions from there to the google ads is what it seems that they're pushing they haven't said it explicitly so what that'll mean is that you'll be able to you know if you have like multi-steps in your campaigns and you know you're doing email marketing and you want to see which is actually you know each step in the journey then you're going to need to use google analytics 4 to be doing and a lot of that detailed it's really easy to get to that journey report now like it is 
like that. You don't have to dig deep down into the file system. So, and the modeling, the attribution modeling is just about, you know, it's, so does somebody just go to an ad and click uh, and then buy something or do they go to Facebook and then the ad and then organic. And so that's what you see. And that's how you can, you know, parse yeah, the analogy that are, the analogy I really like is like, say you're asking your coworker, say you're trying to find somewhere to go eat lunch. And then your coworker says, Hey, there's a new Chinese place that opens up. And then you see a coupon that's actually for that Chinese restaurant. So which thing actually was the thing that pushed you over the edge, right? It's actually more like an aggregate, each of those things pushed together. So you, but you want to know that all those touch points happened. And so it's much easier to attribute that with digital, right? If they see mm. a Facebook ad and then from there they go and actually like go to your website and then they look you up online. So you want to know each of those journeys because each one is going to be super important. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. The rollout of GA4, we're all getting deep into it. I have a blog post, but more on that later. Greg's making me a post to share because we're doing something special. And it's really exciting because it's besides the setup, which is always a challenge and Google's tried to gamify it. I think the points, the main points to know is that when you're setting up this, you're measuring systems, you set it up on one place, Google, like analytics, and on the other place. So it would be like tag manager and Google ads, right? Or say you're just doing, you know, so there's much more that goes into it than Google completely teaches, but following their direction will really help. So if you're overwhelmed with the Google analytics four and the crazy emails that are like, and the logging in and seeing countdown timers, you don't really need to stress. Just talk to a marketer, come to our special we're doing a special tutorial, but it's only for people that we know so or that know us and message us privately. And then we'll include you. It'll be, I believe, the Zoom. But uh, that kind of leads us into AI. And I know we know we're not going to get deep into it because of our conversation in a couple weeks, but AI is failing. Did you put this? AI is, is stripping naked? What? Uh, that that was Rena. That... Oh, basically, yeah. So it's no, this is filthy, to... Rena. A little right. filthy yeah. there. <laughs> I know yes. what you're talking about. This is supposed to be for our AI session, but basically, oh. it's about. Yeah, can we just save it? Secret. We'll session? skip it. We're skipping it, people. Okay, and so yeah. the local SEO fail, and what do we got? We got something really interesting happening. With the local SEO? Yeah, with the rank and rent. Oh, yeah, that was part of the so what had happened is Google is now suing a couple of SEOs because they were dun, running a dun, Facebook dun. group. Where they would teach people how to do rank and rent, which is basically creating fake Google business profiles, ranking them, getting emails and then selling the leads to other businesses to real businesses um, that actually do it. So it's a middleman. It was yeah. a middleman. And we yeah, knew yeah. somebody who's a black hat SEO who was doing that. And it was icky. They shut down Google it. Business Profile. Shut it down last yeah. summer because of this. No, no. It was in 2020 when they shut it down. Oh, okay. I feel like I got an email from one of those people yesterday offering me those leads. Oh. There, there's I probably get, strong like for leads all the time. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Definitely oh. junk. We get a, I see the clients getting the like, hey, pay me and I'll get you hundreds of five-star reviews. I mean, you know. They'll get taken down and you'll probably get penalized. Right? It's just not good to game the situation because you'll lose all your good stuff along with your bad stuff. And not only that, Google just chooses to remove some reviews anyway, even if you haven't. So, Ooh, so irritating. one of my favorite reviews has been is, is missing for no particular reason, doesn't go an, against any of the rules. And it was really a great one. And I'm so disappointed. <laughs> you know, if you can get them to at least, you know, which one it is. If you can get them to change a word on their review yeah. and re-upload it, I got that and I was able to see it. So right. that was mm. that was my only solution I found to complaining bitterly, being mad at Google. And I actually had a Google business profile, Google rep, call me back and tell me basically there's nothing they can do. I was upset. Yeah. I was upset by that call, I will tell you. <laughs> I was like, because it's hard to get reviews. You got to put yourself out there and be like, you know. Definitely. I don't like asking for them, quite frankly. And so when I do finally ask for one <laughs> and get it from a project that I'm particularly proud of, it's very distressing when it's not there. 
I know what yeah. other and I, I mean, I, I do ask, I especially ask if the client's really happy, like at that moment where they're like, you've done a great job. I am excited and happy. You're like, Ooh, can I ask you a favor? You know? And yeah, that it works. It does. But look at Greg. I saw you smile. I saw that smile. Greg was telling us how nobody bugs him about smiling anymore. And uh, we're happy to say he smiles all the time. So Greg, you've, you've changed over the years. It was a challenge not to smile way back then. Oh yeah, no challenge now. It's better to smile and laugh, right? You got I you gotta laugh more because wow, you 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 might cry if you don't laugh, you know. And okay, so right. Right. Stare at porn out into space. Right. Stare into space. All right. Oh, and a couple last things, which is we noticed Trello has changed. If you use Trello, it's Rena. It, yours has changed too. Yeah, it's more like a blog post kind of no, format. Mine changed. Yeah, mine changed a few weeks ago, but I actually quite like it. I'm liking the new version once I got over the change because I don't take change very well. It's like just when you get something perfect, especially your Trello cards, <laughs> when you get your system perfect and then they change it, it's, it can be kind of annoying. But yeah, it has changed a little bit. Yeah, I like it too. I mean, it's so and you use Trello for your project management, right? I do project management and client management. I have both onto one space because I can't handle too many spaces, especially when they're not syncing properly. Right. Who doesn't yeah. cobble together their marketing tools, right? I mean, if we had, we should start a list of all the tools that we all use and a spreadsheet. Tools play a huge part. I mean, we yeah. save up, cause you taught me this. We save up so we can buy the tools once a year for the year. So we try to save up for that. And this year we did, we wanted to try a bunch of new tools that mm -hmm. are specific to SEO. We'll see how it goes. Cause now there's AI everything. So, and all these integrations with all these tools have AI integrations now. So yeah. it is unique. I have, you guys started testing content with an AI checking generator? No, but I've used one. I'm not offering any AI stuff that I've been doing lately because we have the AI version and we have one minute left. Oh, damn. So okay, we're out of time. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> yes, we have no a question. This is and really yes, we're talking about AI. I know. Um, it's exciting. We're, should we not be promoting again as a recap the thing we're doing on Tuesday? Tuesday? Yes, on Tuesday. on Tuesday, if you've made it to the end, on Tuesday... We are doing a Zoom that is going to help you walk through getting your Google Analytics 4 set up. So join us if you want to know more about it. You do have to message either myself, Phelan, Greg, or Rena in a private message. You can tag us in a Facebook post under this post. So just tag us and get our attention. And then we'll talk to you in Messenger. And then you can get a link to join us. And we're doing that because it's, you know, it's a private thing, right? We're sharing screens and stuff. And, and so we want to do it with a small group who are really interested. So I think we're all going to be there too. Yeah. And there's happy hour tomorrow. On Friday, we four o'clock Pacific. Yeah, we missed a couple of weeks, but we're back on track for tomorrow at four o'clock Pacific time. Yeah. Join me there. Yeah. Yeah. And then last but not least, next week's topic is... Dun, 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 dun. Silence, guys. What's next week's topic? The final countdown to Google Analytics 4. The final countdown. Da -da -da -da. Okay, I don't need to sing, I'm but... The glad. I'm so Which glad when I started getting hundreds of emails. <laughs> what did Google. you say, Greg? Yeah. I was going to say it'll basically be the free version of what we do probably on Tuesday. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To, um, every, to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ish ish people ish but okay on that note we will see you next week thank you for joining us let us know if you have any marketing news that we have missed down in the comments and we will see and you next week if you're watching this anywhere else we are in the geek speak are in the cyberpunk geek marketing mixer facebook page you can join us there or you can Group. simply come back to where you are now bye see you at happy hour see you next time The conversation never stops in our Facebook group, Cyberpunk Geeks. Join us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash cyberpunk geeks to ask your questions, meet new friends, and learn even more about search, social, and websites.